show the slide? Yes, auto was able. Yeah, okay, good. Welcome everyone to the session 4C, Big Data Meets Security, a uh, very aptly titled um, session. Um, we are honored to have our first speaker, Professor Hung In. Um, he recently moved from Syracuse University to University of uh, Southern California. Um, thank you. Um, okay. Um, <coughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, for coming. So uh, the talk I have um, um, today is called Scalable Graph-Based uh, uh, Box Search for Former Images. So this is a joint work with my uh, students uh, back in Syracuse, Chen Feng, Ren Dong Zhou, Chen Cheng, Xu, um, Yao Chen, and Ren Testa. Um, so the first author uh, couldn't come for the uh, visa issue, so I will just present instead. Um, as we know, IoT devices becomes, um, become ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous recently. Uh, so, including lots of different kinds of devices, uh, such as healthcare, um, you know, vehicle, um, you know, uh, smart home, smart cities, and so on. Um, and we also see the uh, tremendous, um, tremendous um, uh, increase in terms of the uh, number of IoT devices. Uh, from this figure, we can see that the growth is actually expo uh, exponential. Um, start uh, back a few years, the, uh, the market share primarily um, comprised of uh, smartphones, laptops, and uh, tablets. But nowadays, um, uh, it's occupied mainly by industrial and emerging things. And also, we see uh, growth in terms of the vulnerabilities. Uh, from one source, we can see there are um, five times increase in terms of the IoT vulnerabilities. And some vulnerabilities exist uh, existed for decades, and uh, um, they occupied more than millions of devices. So as we can see, finding vulnerabilities in IoT devices becomes uh, more crucial than ever uh, because the exponential growth in terms of IoT ecosystem. Um, and uh, the consequence of security breaches is also um, so severe that so we cannot afford it because you know it may um, actually cause human lives um, and break down our physical world. Um, and the tr uh, traditional uh, security mechanisms like antivirus and the uh, host-based uh, uh, ID IDS are not in are not feasible because of the low CPU and uh, you know memory storage. Um, there are some works in terms of finding unknown vulnerabilities, such as using model checking, um, simple execution, and fuzzing. Um, they are normally very expensive. They do not scale. Um, and in this case, this is not our focus. Instead, uh, we focus on finding known vulnerabilities. OK, so it's just like the ones that ex existed for years. So we like to act as a vetting system that, uh, uh, you know, scan um, the known vulnerabilities in the devices before they enter the, uh, the market. Um, the key challenge here is that we need to find the code patterns or, um, you know, we perform the code search in a cross-platform setting, which means uh, you have, for example, a hard belief vulnerability that you find it in x86 platform, and then you want to find the same vulnerability in ARM, in MIPS, in any other uh, platforms. Um, there are some uh, existing works in this uh, domain. Uh, the first one is very simple and uh, straightforward. It search for string patterns and uh, constant string um, constants uh, that are unique for certain vulnerabilities. For example, backdoors or hard coded uh, the passwords. So, if you find these strings or password, that means very likely it's, it's a uh, you know there's a backdoor in the in the firmware. However, this is not a very general approach, right? Uh, you cannot use it to search for other kinds of vulnerabilities, for example, bubble overflow. Um, there are two recent works um, that use control flow graphs or extract features on control flow graphs 
and perform the graph level matching to find the vulnerabilities. Um, the second one is published in Oakland 15, uh, which extracts uh, uh, the I, uh, I.O. pairs, which is input and output uh, uh, pairs by performing random execution, which is actually quite expensive. Uh, there's a later paper uh, called Discovery, um, published in NDSS this year, uh, also extract the features from control flow graph, but uh, it's extracted more lightweight features. Uh, they're uh, statistic features. Uh, so it's more efficient than the previous one, but still lacks of scalability because you have to perform the, uh, the graph level matching. Um, to further improve performance, they propose a pre filtering, which is before uh, performing this graph matching, it has a set of lightweight filters. Um, but as we show in our experiments, this kind of pre filtering is not very reliable. Actually, significantly hurts uh, the accuracy. So the insight here is that all these systems perform some sort of graph matching. So if you look at um, this figure, uh, we can see the input is a control flow graph, and you have a database of control flow graphs for vulnerabilities you have. And then when you search vulnerabilities, you use this input control flow graph and then perform the, the, the graph level matching for every one of them. Okay, and then try to find the best match. And it's going to return a, a list of uh, rankings. So we start from the best ranking to the second one and so on, and look for, and then you perform manual investigation on, on these uh, control flow graphs. So as we know, graph matching is an NP-hard problem, right? And the most efficient algorithm takes n cube complexity. Still very expensive. So it's impossible to perform this kind of a pairwise graph matching on millions of devices, on millions of firmware images, right? It's clearly the wrong way to do it. So we probably are familiar with a similar problem, which is image search, right? You, you guys all use the, like, a image search like a, from Google, right? So it's a similar uh, problem because you can search or tag an object from millions of images which can return your result in seconds, right? This is a, a you know, interesting news. Uh, we have heard this, uh, you know, uh, recently that uh, even though this algorithm sometimes produces errors, but uh, most of the time it actually works very, very well. So the key here is that in image search, we don't compare images one by one. Right, this is a um, very typical um, image search pipeline, right? We start from here, uh, we have, uh, you know, source images, we extract the raw features in terms of pixels, okay? Um, and then uh, we perform what is called a vector quantization, which identify the high level features or learn the high level features from a large number of images automatically and then map these raw low-level features to the high-level features, which we generate these uh, high-level feature representation. And then while we perform the graph search, oh no, the image search, we are not searching on the original image, but on the feature vector instead. <clears throat> so now the idea, the question we have is that can we take a similar approach to search the control flow graphs in this way, right? Can we learn high level representations from the control flow graph and then search the high level features, right, instead of the control flow graphs? The idea sounds very straightforward, but the, how to do it is still quite challenging because control flow graphs is a completely different kind of representation than the image pixels. Right. So we start from the image example again, right? Let's say we recognize the, the face. We start from the source image, and then to recognize the face, we actually learn, sorry, we actually learn the high level features like, uh, you know, different parts of your face, like your, your nose, 
uh, your eye, your, your, your mouth, and so on, right? We call it a bag of words. So each word is a unique portion of your face. And then, um, yeah, so this is a, called a bag of words. Or altogether, we call it a code book. So we need to recognize this kind of uh, bag of words or code book from the control flow graphs. So similarly, what we want to do is that starting from the, um, um, you know, the, the, the source control flow graphs, we want to learn such code books by performing some kind of a, a clustering and a group the similar control flow graph together. And each cluster represents some kind of high level of property we have. All right, and this, all, this thing all together is called a code book. And then, uh, well, we, before we perform the search, we're going to map the original control flow graphs to the code book. And then perform the feature encoding and generate a feature vector, something like this. And then each dimension, each dimension represents a property high-level property in the original control flow graph. Oh, that's the very high-level idea. So more specifically, this is our uh, you know, workflow. We start from the, the source, which is the binary functions that we extract from the firmware images. Again, so these binary functions uh, may come from x86, MIPS, ARM, or any architecture, right? We disassemble it and then generate the control flow graph and we extract some you know, low-level features from the control flow graph. And then uh, on the side, independently, right, we get a large number of uh, training control flow graphs and we start to learn the high-level features from, from these graphs. Eventually, we generate a code book. And then we use the code book to encode the original control flow graph we, we get from the binary function. So in this case, we generate such a high level feature vector, okay? And, uh, and then we can group, uh, you know, we can uh, put these feature vectors for the vulnerabilities we found in the wild or uh, the, all the binary functions we found from firmware images, right? We can put them into a database. Uh, put into the feature vector database. To make the search more efficiently, we can use locality sensitive hashing. The, in this way, we actually, uh, you know, uh, create a hash table for these feature vectors. <clears throat> so let's look at um, these steps one by one. The first step is a raw feature extraction, which means starting from the binary function, we extract a control flow graph. Uh, formally, we call this attributed control flow graph because every node in the control flow graph, which is a basic block, contains a set of labels, which means uh, there are a list of features that we want to associate with. But these features are very lightweight, very efficient to get instead of the, uh, you know, I/O pairs that you have to perform the random execution or symbolic execution, for example. Um, so here's a list of uh, lightweight features we use. Okay, uh, we have two kinds of features. The first one is called uh, statistical features, right? So this actually, uh, we kind of borrow this from the discovery. We use the same set of features, including the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, string constants, uh, numeric constants, a number of transfer instructions, number of calling instructions, and so on, okay? Uh, in addition to that, we also utilize um, what we call the structural features, which kind of uh, represents the location or the position of a node inside a in, in control flow graph. So in particular, we use uh, the number of offspring and the between these, these two metrics, okay? Uh, these structural features are very essential for graph matching because the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, approximation algorithm we use does not consider the, this kind of topology very well. In particular, we use the bipartite graph matching. 
So if we encode this structure feature inside the uh, each node, it will improve the, the matching accuracy. Um, in addition, we also learn um, the weights for these feature vectors. So what this means is that uh, uh, so some features are probably more important than the others. So if we uh, consider the weights during the graph matching, the accuracy will be better. So uh, just to be clear, we use graph matching not for the final search, but used for the you know code book generation and the code uh, you know feature uh, encoding. Okay, so the next step is the feature learning, uh, which is to learn a code book from the raw features, and each code words in the code book, in our case, so represents a uh, property shared by the raw features. So in our case. Uh, this code word is a control flow graph. It's not uh, in other things. So back in this uh, image search example, the you know we want to identify uh, this uh, unique, you know, the nose, eyes, in the face. Uh, these things are the code book. I mean code words. So in our control flow graph, then we perform the, uh, uh, the clustering to group similar graphs together. Okay, and then. Uh, we define the code word as the centroid control flow graph inside the cluster, right? So this centroid node represents a group of similar uh, control flow graphs. So as we see, more specifically, each code word is a centroid control flow graph in this cluster. Uh, and then we use the k-means clustering algorithm um, to um, you know, cluster these uh, uh, training CFGs. Uh, a very important uh, parameter we choose is the codebook size, or in other words, the number of clusters uh, for the for the training. Right. So intuitively, more uh, the bigger the size is, the accuracy can be better. Right. But also, the performance overhead will be um, bigger. Especially for the encoding phase, because we have to compare, uh, you know, with each code word during the encoding. So let's come to the high-level feature encoding. Um, we have studied a couple of encoding uh, schemes and end up chosen uh, this one. So more details can be found in the paper, right? So the, this coding we call the VLAD encoding. Uh, the basic idea is, uh, you know, it's very straightforward. So if you look at the, this figure on the right-hand side, uh, suppose this is the CFG, okay, in this space. And then uh, to generate this or encode this, this feature, uh, encode this CFG, we kind of measure distance from this CFG to all the centroid nodes or the code words in our code book, okay? So then we can generate a feature vector in terms of the distances, okay, to the, um, uh, to the CFG central eight nodes. Um, and then we further normalize this, uh, uh, this uh, feature vector by using the graph similarity instead. Basically, we can ignore the graph size, uh, which can cause some kind of difference in terms of the uh, feature vector. So this is a formal representation for this uh, quantizer. Uh, it's a graph quantizer. OK. So after we, uh, yeah, so if you see from this example, we start from the uh, original uh, ACFG, which is attribute CFG. We learn the code book, and then we finally generate a high-level feature representation. And each feature is a graph similarity between the, the original ACFG to uh, central eight CFG. And then, uh, which the same encoding to generate uh, this uh, database, which uh, we actually have two kinds of databases, right? One for vulnerability, one for the former images we have. And then we use the locality sensitive hashing to store uh, these feature vectors. And then uh, when we uh, perform the search, we will generate the, the rank list like this, uh, ranked by the similarity, okay? 
the final step will be the human investigation on the search results. So uh, we implement a system we call it Genius, all right? So it stands for uh, uh, graph encoding for bug search. Uh, to evaluate the Genius, we, uh, we perform, we basically collect a larger data sets in terms of the firmware images, the binary functions, and uh, hundreds of vulnerabilities. And then we compare with uh, three baseline approaches. Uh, we, to evaluate performance, we uh, evaluate the true positive, false positive rates, search efficiency, preparation time, eventually we perform a case study. So uh, there's some more details about data sets. We have uh, three data sets. One is a baseline data set, including uh, BusyBox, OpenSSL, Core Utils, uh, multiple versions and multiple architectures all together, uh, you know, we can see 568, uh, you know, thousand functions. And the second data sets include 33,000 uh, firmer images we can get from public uh, it, uh, across, um, you know, uh, 26 different vendors. Uh, eventually we have, um, uh, the last one is the vulnerability database, uh, data set. Uh, we basically check the vulnerability um, you know, um, vulnerabilities for the uh, open SSL, uh, and then we get 154 uh, vulnerabilities from, for open SSL. Um, so for the baseline comparison, we uh, in particular compare with the uh, three ones. So the discovery to publish in the SS, and the second one from the Oakland, and uh, we also include the third one called Sandroid. So this is not the same concept, okay? So this uh, paper published using security, uh, which converts a control flow graph into one number, one integer number, okay? So uh, they use it for, uh, you know, Android application, you know, matching or malware search. So we, uh, you know, this concept is very general. We, we thought we could also use this one for the firmware search. So we want to compare with this as well. Um, so this figure shows the true positive rates. Um, it will increase when we increase the, thir the search threshold K. Um, so the best performer is Genius, okay? It uh, outperforms the rest of them very significantly as, as you see from this, uh, uh, this gap, big gap. The second one is the discovery without pre-filtering. So as we, this very important observation which is feature encoding is actually more accurate than pairwise graph matching. You, this sounds very counterintuitive for many people, right? So graph matching is very greedy. You're trying to find the, the best graph uh, which closely matched with the, the one you, you, you have. But the feature encoding, encode high level feature and try to find the, clo the best uh, feature uh, vector. So why is that? Why is that? Think about, again, the facial recognition, right? So you want to search the best face close to yours, so what do you do? You look at the best, the, the, the most similar eyes, most similar nose and mouth, and all together, you decide which one is the best, you know, match. So this is actually better than just look at the face as a, as a, as a whole. So the third one um, is uh, discovery with pre-filtering. As we can see, um, the pre-filtering is really not that reliable, right? So actually hurts the accuracy a lot. So the second observation is that pre-filtering significantly hurts the accuracy. The, the last performer is uh, Centroid. So it actually has very high uh, efficiency, but uh, uh, if you, I think our observation is that at least for the, in, uh, for the IoT bug search domain, we have to carefully search which graph encoding scheme to choose. If you choose it in the wrong way, it actually, uh, you know, it actually um, um, uh, hurts the performance. So we also show the ROC curve in terms of false positive and false negative. We show the similar results. Uh, in terms of search efficiency, uh, we can see that, uh, um, you know, uh, Genius also uh, performs uh, the best and um, uh, similar with the Centroid approach. But the other approach is, uh, you know, uh, is uh, slower, several magnitude um, orders. 
uh, we also check the search scalability, right, in terms of the number of functions in our database. As we can see, uh, we haven't seen obvious increase. The, the increase actually quite, quite uh, you know, small. Uh, this one shows the pre preparation time in terms of the um, number of functions and, uh, uh, you know, and also across different sites of CFGs. And uh, we can see the preparation time is also very fast. Uh, we also compare it with, uh, with this um, Oakland paper. Uh, since it doesn't have the open source uh, the code release and it's hard to reproduce the results, uh, we actually use the same data set and compare with them. As we can see, uh, we can always label uh, these two functions in the top two, uh, and it's actually better than these two versions of the system. And uh, compared to preparation time, we are also about much better than these two versions. And uh, we are just slower, we are slower than discovery because we perform encoding in addition to the raw feature extraction. Um, so we have uh, two case studies, right? The first one is that search for two vulnerabilities in uh, the entire home, uh, you know, firmware images we have. And uh, in particular, we find, uh, like, uh, we confirm the 10 vulnerabilities out of, uh, you know, two, um, I mean, two vendors. And uh, for this vulnerability, we confirm the 13. Uh, you know, they are from these three vendors. Uh, the second case study, uh, we choose the two latest uh, former images from D-Link, and we search for all vulnerabilities we have. Uh, just return the result in less than 1 point, uh, one sec uh, 0 0.1 seconds, and then we check the uh, top 100 candidates, uh, and then we actually confirm that, that these two images have the following vulnerabilities. Only one or two are actually patched which is actually very concerning because remember these two are very, the latest one. So they still have the old vulnerabilities not patched. So in conclusion, right, so takeaway is that the Genius is a scalable vulnerability search engine for IoT devices. It performs the high level feature encoding on control flow graphs to achieve high search accuracy. At the same time, you search even higher accuracy, sorry, efficiency, uh, uh, achieves even higher accuracy than pairwise graph matching. So I will leave this one as the last uh, slide because the lead author is on about the, the job market. So if uh, you are an employer and you are interested, you can talk to her directly. Yeah. We have a few minutes for questions. Hello, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, Andre Cosin, Firmware the Trade. Uh, I have a question, well, two questions. First is main 